Live June, former Gamecock, 2002, 2006, Spurs up. I'm here with my cousin, Rodney Kenlow. Uh, we are, right? <laughs> so it's, it's been a minute. Uh, you know, we've, we've been gone for a couple of weeks. Uh, a lot of stuff happened in between the time. So we had uh, Halloween. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we had some 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 new occurrences in the, in the college football rim, in the NFL, um, high school football, a lot of stuff going on. So it's it's just good to be back. Um, you know, good good talking again and, and being back talking about the show. So what you been up to, Cuz? It's chilling. <laughs> uh, so it's always good to be back. Uh, what's up, PCP fam? Uh, welcome back for another exciting episode. We got a lot to talk about today. <laughs> uh, Strive for night. Former yeah. Penn State running back. Yeah. We yeah. are. Yeah. <laughs> and uh so so tonight, uh so we here in the studio, we're gonna be uh playoff playoff PCP. Yeah. <laughs> uh so the high school playoffs kicking off tonight. So we got a lot of big games um in Georgia and of course back in our hometown of South Carolina. So um unfortunately my high school, Timberland High School, we lost uh last week. Uh so it's it's, it's you know, our season is pretty much over with, but uh, I know Stratford's still yeah. playing. I know you're proud of them. So yeah. uh, we shout were out talking to my, earlier. Sh- shout yeah. out to my Stratford Knights. Uh, first time we won the region. I want to say since I think 2005. Yeah. So we're playing Sumter tonight. As you know, Wiley Richardson played at Sumter. Dexter Davis, who we had on the show uh, a few months ago, played at uh, Sumter. So just good luck to my Knights tonight. Yeah. So I'm proud of them. <laughs> and just uh, you know, speaking along those lines, as far as you know, playoff football, high school football. So. This time of year, you know, it's, it's where champions are made. You know, yeah. so big time players make big time plays and, and big games. I always tell my kids that, so <laughs> I like saying that. But you know, just kind of speak on, you know, your high school. You know, when you were in that senior year and, and you looking at, you know, pushing and progressing to that state championship level. What were some of those memorable moments for you? <clears throat> I was just in my senior year, just every moment, just knowing it's my last year. I got to make the most of everything, trying to get a scholarship, trying to get to college, and making sure I stay injury free. So it was a lot to take in that year, but just mm-hmm. having my eye on the championship, as you know, you gotta take one game at a time. And you take one game at a time, you can almost go undefeated, or you can go undefeated and you get the, ch- uh, the playoffs and lose the game and it's all yeah. over. And that's <laughs> kind of what happened to us. We only lost one game, our last game. I think we made it to almost, I think it was the second or third round of playoffs. We lost to uh, Rock Hill, but we almost made it, but that was the only game we lost. But you got to take each, each game at a time, be prepared, and just like that last year, just make sure that you really take it in because some players never get to play football again. So you always have to just be there for your team and just just take it in. Yeah, so, yeah. Great and experience, I, though. And I remember my senior year, you know, we had uh, you know, we had a rough senior year. We had, we had a new coach that just came in, and I actually broke my ankle uh, my senior year in high school. So oh, wow. we were playing uh, – who were we playing? I can't remember who we were playing that night, but – I ended up getting sacked and somebody fell on the on the back of my ankle and I and I broke my ankle. I actually came back in the game and played for a couple of plays mm-hmm. and then I found out that the next morning my ankle was broke. And I was actually me and my dad were going to the Clemson game the next day. So wow. Roger Dazzler was quarterback and I wanted to go to that game, so I limped from the parking lot <laughs> <laughs> to, to to Memorial Stadium to see Woodrow Dance. It was pretty cool because you know Clemson would let everybody come on the field, and they mm-hmm. still do that after the game. So I was able to see Julius Peppers and, and uh, Woodrow Dance and get on the field, but I wasn't gonna miss that game for nothing. Yeah. So I was like, we go to the clinic later, you know, and get that leg <laughs> checked out. But I wanted to go to that game. So, but uh, but yeah, it was just just a fun time, and you know that senior year, like you said, a lot of people. That's the last time you're gonna play football, you know, mm. in, in that realm and, and have on organized football, have on your pads and be able to play with, you know, your teammates and your boys and, and you know it, it, and your family there. Like yeah, you know, yeah. your family's right there, they get yeah. to see it. You know where we from, they're gonna be talking about it in the barber shop yeah. the next day. So <laughs> but make sure you make sure you represent. <laughs> yeah, make sure you leave on a good note and uh and, and yeah, so it's a lot of memories and you know, I remember like my granddad, he was able to come watch me play and he couldn't get out of the truck. Mm-hmm. You know, because he had some some health issues and whatnot, but he was able to sit in the parking lot him and my grandma and watch me play. And that was the first time he ever seen me play. Wow. And he's like, you know, I didn't know Gerard could do that, do this, yeah. <laughs> so it it was good hearing him talk and just, you know, he's passed now, but you know, just thinking about that and those memories. So yeah, so to all the all the high schoolers out there, you mm-hmm. know, make sure you you leave it all on the field and um, you know, like I said, there's some big battles here in Georgia, especially um I saw a ranking that came out in the AJC where the, the 7 eight playoffs in Georgia is like the second toughest bracket in the nation wow. um, for, for high school football. So, 
Um, you know, you got your Graysons and you got your Carrollton's and Park Views, and you know, so I'm gonna represent Gwinnett County because I'm here <laughs> now. But you know, it, it's a lot of big time games, so we'll see who who prevails in the end. Of course, Buford, um, you know, they're there every year, so. We'll see who prevails, and, and we'll be talking about that uh, week in and week out when we're here with you guys and keeping track of that. Um, and then, you know, tomorrow, you know, we have some GFL yeah. championship games tomorrow. So, shout out to everybody that's playing tomorrow. Um, I know Mill Creek, uh, Grayson, yeah. uh, Lawrenceville, of course, Buford once again. So, <laughs> you know, all of these programs, you know, uh, a lot of big games tomorrow. So, you know, make sure everybody gets a good night of sleep. And when we come back on next time, we'll talk about some of these GFL champions yeah. and talking about the GFL. But, you know, that's where it starts, you know, in, in those rec programs and, and the kids building up and coming through the program. So okay. um, excited for those kids and, and keep putting your work in and keep grinding and coming up through your systems. Yeah, so. like you said, congratulations to all those teams, <clears throat> coaches, staff, even the parents. Mm-hmm. And even like you represent tomorrow, parents, make sure y'all out, make sure y'all out there, grandparents, <laughs> like you said, how that, that meant so much to you. Mm-hmm your grandparents being to your game and things like that. So just make sure you're out there watching the kids because it, it means that much to them just yeah. showing up. So Yeah, yeah. And so. it goes goes more than football. You never know how the lasting effect that would have on, on those kids. Yeah. Like and you still talking about it now. And that you was still like 20, talking 20 about years it, yeah, ago. yeah. And remember that it's all about ha- having fun and development and growth at the yeah. end of the day. So, you know, whether your kids win or lose, you know, Nick Saban is not going to be out there tomorrow. <laughs> at Lanier High School giving out in the scholarship. So uh, just make sure that, you know, you encourage your kids, pat them on the back, whether they win or lose, you know, and, and you know, it's a big accomplishment to get to that level, um, to, to any time you're playing for a championship in any level. So um, definitely excited for those kids and, and shout out to everybody. Playoff, youth football, everything that's going on. So, and, uh, you know, definitely excited times around this, this time of year. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now it's time to talk about some <laughs> college football. We, we're going to start with, with USC before we move on to Michigan and yeah. everything that's going on with them and Penn State in this game tomorrow. How, yeah. How's USC? How, how y'all doing this year? It, it's been a rough year. It's been a rough year, but I will say this. So I think it was 99 when South Carolina went 0 and 11. So it's nothing you could tell me <laughs> <laughs> that's going to get me frustrated or get my spirits down because I always know that it could get better or be worse than where we are right now. Yeah, coming so, from a true cowboy fan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm very optimistic. The two fan bases are very optimistic being a Dallas Cowboy fan <laughs> and a South Carolina Gamecock fan. But I'll say, you know, we, we still got a chance to make a bowl game. Um, you know, we played our best football in November last year, beating Tennessee, beating Clemson. Uh, we had some big wins. So even though I didn't, you know, it's hard to win football games at any level. I put that out there. Yeah. Jacksonville State is a good team at the end of the day. We struggled with them a little bit last week, but a win is a win. Yeah. So I look at it like that. You got to look at the positive. You know, a lot of fans weren't happy with the way Shane Beamer addressed the, you know, the media and the fans saying, you know, basically we won the game while y'all complaining. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day, everybody's looking at the big picture. You know, we want to see that progression as a fan base, as a former alumni, but I'm still behind Shane Beamer 100%. I believe in everything that he's doing. Um, you know, of course, nobody's going to be perfect. There's some things that could change here and there, but we got the players I think we need in the locker room. We just got to clean some things up, but you can still make a bowl game. Yeah. You can still make some noise. The recruiting is going good. Um, you got some players coming in. So at the end of the day, it is what it is. I mean, we're not meeting expectations, but it's hard and it's different for me because, you know, a lot of the fans, you're not in the locker room, you're mm-hmm. not in the weight room, you're not on the practice field. So them guys putting in work. So yeah. you can't knock them guys, the coaching staff, the players for what they're doing. And sometimes it's going to go your way and sometimes it's not. Yeah. So the difference between a, a eight and one team and a two and six team is a couple plays here and there. So. Yeah. Are you going to make those plays? You're going to make that tackle? You're going to make that PBU, whatever the case is. So sometimes it's going to roll your way, sometimes it's not. Now, I'm not going to absolve some of these <laughs> some of these coaches and, and, and different people on the staff as far as their responsibilities and what they're supposed to do. But at the end of the day, I know they're working hard. Everybody wants to win. But, I mean, we'll, we'll get the shit right yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah, it's funny that you say that because I, <laughs> uh, I just got back on Facebook and I, I joined this, uh, this Penn State fan group and, like, mm-hmm. During the Ohio State game, it was like, Franklin's a bum, let's fire him. And after the games, like, it's time to get rid of Franklin. I'm like, 
Living losing maybe one or two games the past few seasons. Like this team's going really winning uh yeah. two games and we ready to get rid of him. So it's like sometimes you take for, take it for granted that you're winning. Yeah. But it's a process and it's it, it's hard to get get to the top. Everyone's yeah. gunning for the top and once you that top team, like you know, everyone's looking for you and then you got teams stealing signs and doing other things to try to win so yeah yeah so you know, know i'm gonna have yeah. to bring that up yeah so. we're we gonna get into that we're gonna get in that. even like nick saban i mean nick saban you see nick saban jump onto the the, the student section and the fans at alabama like y'all used to winning like mm -hmm. give me some energy like yeah. like you know they spoiled in a sense because yeah. they're not used to losing they're not used to being in tough games it's a little different this year yeah so and to kind of you know talk about that i know we we talked about this briefly, but I think we should hit on this too, Bill Belichick, you know. So how important is it, you know, you can have the best the best game plan in the world, you can have the best coaching staff in the world, but you gotta have players at the yeah. end of the day. And a lot of people are seeing, you know, we have Bill Belichick up here yeah. and everybody else down here, but the person that closed that gap. Tom Brady. Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you, you got to look at that, too. You got to have players in the locker room. And then if you got the players, you got to have the coaches that put them in the right situation. So, yeah. um, you know, and, everything goes hand in hand. And a lot of these fan bases out here spoiled. Yeah. Right? yeah. <clears throat> and I so. think you got to give Belichick credit because he did take a chance on Brady and brought him and mm -hmm. they groomed him and he didn't help him become who he was as well with the play system and all that as well. Even – well, he became who he was, but still got to give him a little. Still got to give him credit, yeah. even though they ain't doing as well as they were before. Yeah. So, yeah. But Tom Brady he was special, and just like goes to show, you can go in any. Just like when you get in the NFL, you just got to make sure you make the best of your opportunity. Yeah. You just never know who's in the back waiting, and someone like him who never really had a chance, and he went the seven, seventh round. Seventh round. I think was he the last round. pick or close to the last? pick? I don't pick? think he was the last pick. He was close to the last. I remember seeing yeah. his combine. Yeah. I'm like, oh boy, like that was like <laughs> him running, but <laughs> yeah. And you got to be in the right situation. Yeah. Like everything has to fall in place. So People don't realize it's, it's like a lot of factors into that. Yeah, do what you're supposed <laughs> to do, but a lot of that's luck, being right, like right place, mm -hmm. right time person got to like you and give you that opportunity all that all yeah. that matters sometimes coaches set you up for right opportunities sometimes yeah. they set people who they don't want in the situation up for wrong opportunities exactly <laughs> exactly so it's, it's it's a lot of factors that goes into that and we're gonna circle back to that to that sign stealing <laughs> uh, you know breaking news so we, we was on the way to the studio today and we saw where uh, you know Jim Harbaugh was suspended yeah um, and I thought it was interesting because he got suspended by the Big Ten Mm. and not by the NCAA. So, you know, Jim Harborough is under investigation for, for stealing signs, and supposedly he had a coach that was going to the other games and, and getting the signs from the other coaches and all this kind of stuff. So it was interesting that, like I said, the Big Ten suspended him for three games, and two of those games, so you got Penn State, you got Ohio State, and then there's another game sandwich in, the, in between there. but. Uh, I thought it was interesting that the NCAA, I mean, the Big Ten suspended him. And I told you on the way over here, like, I feel like the Big Ten is trying to jump ahead of that because, remind you, Michigan is in the BCS right now. So yeah. if the playoffs started today, they're in the play. And, you know, the, the NCAA is still investigating him. But in the back of my mind, I feel like, once again, everything revolves around money. So yeah. the Big Ten wants a national championship. They got two teams out of the four teams in there right now. So they feel in a good position and I feel like they just want to get ahead of the NCAA saying look we did something so let them go ahead and get in the BCS and coach these playoff games and you know there was some talk about them being suspended for the BCS game so I feel like the the Big Ten is kind of trying to jump ahead of that so they can keep them in the playoff games. Nah, I understand what, what, <coughs> what they what, what you're saying and what they're trying to do that's like a integrated the game yeah and you know the sportsmanship part of it and I mean, and, and you got a caught doing something extreme. Yeah, yeah, yeah you went above and beyond. Doing the way you do yeah, it. you went above and beyond. It's, you you being extra with it. So I, I get it. Um, but you know, back to you know, put the green dot on the on the QB and put the green dot on the middle linebacker or the safety of the defense. Whoever's calling your defense, and you know, most of the times the quarterback is calling the plays. But go ahead and put the green dot on the helmet. Mimic the NFL. You don't have to have all these crazy posters and stuff on the sideline and let these boys go play. That's that's how you control that. Now, you shouldn't have to, yeah. but when you look at the laws that we have in our government, 
the rules that we have at certain places, all those rules were put in place <laughs> for a reason, yeah. right? Because somebody did something mm. to say, we have to enforce this, we have to do this. So this is one of them instances where the NCAA has to evolve. Yeah. Let's go ahead and, and increase the technology and do what we need to do and use the capabilities, mimic the NFL, put the green dots on the helmet, and then you won't have to worry about this ever again. Yeah. I think, you know, I think we talked about this before. They was making it like it was the cost issue because it cost so much money. And then I looked up it recently, and it was saying it's because I guess third parties didn't want to be involved in case injuries happen with their microphones or stuff being in the helmet. And so, like a major injury happened to someone, and they them getting sued and things like that. So you just you just never know. But I think they do need to evolve the technology, especially as 2023. <laughs> NFL's been doing it, why can't college do it? Yeah. And I think some things happen and some things do change. So this may be the, the situation that changes that. Because I remember even back in like 2002, when even Joe was hesitant about the instant replay and the game uh, with Michigan. And after that, he changed his whole mindset because the refs didn't call a good game. Some things that <laughs> you could see, like if you had an instant replay, would have changed the results of those games. So I think things do happen and it, it do and it does change so hopefully this might be one of those things yeah yeah and hopefully you know which i i think the the, the powers that be and the the you know everything to work itself out like i said we got michigan and we got ohio state in the top four right now and those two still have to play each other so i think everything will work itself out at the end of the day i do believe in karma i do believe that everything happened for a reason so if Michigan is doing all this stuff and they're doing all that, I think at the end of the day, everything will work itself out and the, the four teams that need to be there will be there. And, you know, I, I'm going to just be honest. I think I just think Nim, uh, Jim Harbaugh did it. You know? <laughs> 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 like, I, I think he did it. And he knew exactly what he was doing. Um, and I seen where he was, uh, he was with Ric Flair. <laughs> um, last week, you know, he was like, well, if y'all want us to be the villains, then we're going to be the villains. We're going to be those guys. But, you know, wrestling was entertainment. You, this, you know? is, this is the way out. <laughs> this is the way out. He yeah, he, out of college. And maybe, maybe he wants to go back to the NFL, but I'm, I just, I think he did it, you know, and, you know, not personally, but he had somebody do it for him. Yeah. And, and he was doing it. So, and, and like um, you said, people do it, but he went to the extreme where yeah. you can't really, you can't turn a blind eye to it. Like, yeah. you got people buying tickets to go to games, sit on there and just watching the yeah. film. And, and it, you, like you said, you have to have a player, but a certain advantage, if you know exactly where the play going and like the yeah. hot route, like <laughs> you do have an advantage. So yeah, you calling heard, your plays based on what they doing. Exactly. Yeah, you ain't even watching the game. You sitting over there watching yeah. the coach, writing it down, <laughs> coming back to him. So. And I heard Desmond Howard talking about the game last year. I can't remember who he said he was playing. He was like, they were down or tied at halftime. And then they yeah. had to make halftime adjustments. I was like, yeah, but. If you got a cheat code, yeah. you can start your game while you see your cheat code. Yeah. You can see how you do it. Half time, all right, we're going to pull out these cheat codes. Next yeah. thing you know, you're blowing them out. Yeah, so, so. It, it's, definitely, it's definitely a competitive advantage. Yeah. So um, hopefully the, the, you know, the NCAA um, won't be too hard on, on Michigan and, you know, or take this. Because, like I said, they're playing, they're playing Penn State. And then, you know, whoever, however that works out, they may be in the Big Ten they Championship Maryland game. Too, and yeah, they, they got Maryland, too. Yeah, they got Maryland. Maryland might play up to them. We yeah. had a good game. We blew Maryland out. But Maryland's a good team. Yeah, so. they're a good team. So, those, those are tough games. So, it's not like they're playing slouch games. But it just seems like this year, Jim Harbaugh had a lot of stuff going. Even at the beginning of the year, <laughs> he had the whole recruiting, you know, talking to recruits during the dead period and doing all that kind of stuff. So, we can't keep giving him the benefit of the doubt. That's, that's my point with that one. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, we got – you know, the BCS rankings came out uh, two weeks ago, so we're here now in, in uh, what is it, week eight, week nine, but you, know, you got, tomorrow, you got Georgia Miss. and Ole Miss tomorrow. You got Michigan in there. You got Ohio State in there. Washington. You got Florida State in there. Oh, yeah, Florida yeah, State. Yeah, Florida State. So, you know, it's that time of year where you really can't lose. Yeah. So it's a lot of big games, and uh, I'm going to really be watching that Georgia Ole Miss game. Uh, <laughs> I don't like Lane Kiffin. You know, I, I I don't really care care too much for him, and, and you know, my whole thing was, you know, when Alshon Jeffrey came to South Carolina, he made a comment that you know, if, if you go to South Carolina, you're gonna be pumping gas for the rest of your life. <laughs> um, and, and you know, ever since then, I'm like, okay. And I heard some other things about Lane Kiffin too, as far as recruiting and how he deals with high school players. But 
you know, he, he made that little comment to Alshon, and, you know, for those of you who don't know, Alshon is a Super Bowl champion. Philadelphia Eagles played in the league, had a great career. Uh, so, you know, for him to say that, that was that was a, a shot to, mm-hmm. to all South Carolinians and the University of South Carolina. But at the end of the day, he's a good coach. Yeah. They score points. And as much as I don't like Lane Kiffin, I dislike Georgia more. I was about to ask. I was about to ask. Are you, are you, are you okay? Yeah, yeah, no, nah, no. Nah, nah. Would you rather Ole, Ole Miss win? No, nah, no. Nah, I'm, I'm rooting for Ole Miss. <laughs> whatever they, they're not the Rebels, they're the Sharks or whatever they call themselves now. But I would prefer that Ole Miss wins the game tomorrow. Um, you know, at the end of the day, the SEC, you know, I want to see an SEC team in there. And Alabama might sneak in there somehow. But. You know, that's the only thing is it's, it's a give and take. You know, if Ole Miss beats Georgia, then Georgia, I still think they'll be in the BCS regardless, just because of the reputation. I still think they'll be in there. But I'd like to see Ole Miss pull it out, and, yeah. you know, just because of the Georgia fan base. I, I really don't like the Georgia fan base. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss pull it out. But I think it'll be a good game. Uh, so we'll see how that plays out. So, okay. Yeah. And they got what, Washington at number five. They mm-hmm. looking really good. Penix mm-hmm. up the Heisman. He having a great year. So I saw him a little bit against Oregon, and it, 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 he's the real deal. So yeah. I like what I saw from him. Looking at his numbers, I think almost three thousand yards passing. Oh yeah, he's yeah, he, yeah. he's exciting to watch. I think they got a good chance to get in there, and I think they would do a good job. Yeah, they they're the exciting team, and I think this year with the the BCS and the Heisman. A lot of it is the the flash, yeah. you know, the the exciting team. So you look at um, my only issue with the Pac-12, you know, you had yeah, the, the, the SEC. I mean, you had <laughs> Caleb Williams from from USC. You got Penix in there, um, even Shador early on. You know, with mm-hmm. Colorado with the numbers they were putting up. But all the games in the Pac-12 is I'm looking at 33 to 38. I'm looking at 45 to 42. So. There's no defense on the field. Yeah. And at the end of the day, that's that's what hurts the Pac twelve when they get into the playoffs. They get in they get matched up with the Georgias and the you know, the Tennessees and even Florida State is built like a SEC team right now. Yeah. So when they get matched up with those teams and you can't score, it, it's not a score for score and who has the ball last, then those games look different. And those yeah. teams not built for that. Yeah. And, you know, they, they end up getting in the playoffs and they get exposed for what they really are. So but those guys are in the in the Heisman race, and you know they want to see those exciting players. And really, Marvin Harrison Jr. I think that's the only reason Ohio State. Not the only reason, but he's Ohio State is up there <laughs> because of what he does. Yeah, yeah, he's a huge part of that. And to go back to last year, I think Ohio State would have beat Georgia if he didn't get hurt yeah. in that playoff game. So the Georgia fans, of course, gonna say, yeah, you know, everything's but but. Ohio State was – I, I yeah, feel like they was about to really get field. loose yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if, if Harrison didn't get hurt. And I think that's why he's he's in the highest rate. He's a great player. I'm not going to take that from – he's a great player, but he's explosive. Yeah. And he makes explosive plays, and those are the type of players that people want to see. And as long as he keeps playing like that, he's going to always be in that Heisman race. And I think he has a good chance to win it as a wide receiver. So we'll see how it plays out at the end of the year. You're right about that. Even I watched him against Penn State. It's like we knew that was all he had, and we just had to stop him. Yeah, <laughs> we couldn't, couldn't stop, stop him. it. <laughs> so it's like even going back to yeah. the side stealing, you know where the play going. If you can't stop the person, you just can't stop him. Yeah. So like he's one of those players you can't stop. And coming from his from his dad, you having that experience, mm-hmm. and just and I heard he said he has a little brother that's 14 that's better than him yes. at that age. So it's like. <laughs> And yeah. he's coming through, through that kind of pedigree. So he, he's just animals. I think he has a good chance. Like I said, Penix is good. I like him. Mm-hmm. The guy from Florida State, he's doing a good. Uh, Jordan Travis. Yeah, he yeah. looks good. LSU, I think their quarterback looks good. And Daniels, yeah. Yeah, so and I think it all depends on, like, this BCS rank, too. If you got a, uh, you in the Heisman race and your team winning and you're doing a great job, that makes your chances better. So yeah. if you're in there and, you, and your team lose, yeah, <laughs> it makes your chance go out the window. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. It's, it's all about team success. So if, if you – if you're saying you're the best player in college football, to me, that's the whole gambit. That's everything, right? Yeah. You're a leader. You know, you're the go-to guy for your team. And we need a play. You can go make that play for us. And those four guys are making plays all year. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think it's going to come down to that. And, you know, you look at you look at LSU. You know, all the, all the, the big teams, they have players in that, in that Heisman race. But I, I, feel, I feel like – uh, the quarterback from LSU, um, Daniels, I feel like he's kind of on the outside looking in just because LSU hadn't had the type of year that they wanted to have in the mm-hmm. SEC. 
So, but you look at those other guys, you look at Harrison, um, you look at Travis from Florida State, you look at uh, Penix from Washington. So those guys have a chance to get into the BCS. Yeah. Um, LSU would be tough for them to get in there, but you know, those, those guys that are left over, those teams as an overall team can, can really play at a high level and go far and have some success. And be honest with you, I'd like to see somebody different in the BCS playoff. I like to see Penix get in there just yeah. to see how they match up, yeah, yeah. you know, with, with some of these other teams, yeah, in Florida State, because there's always been the LSU, the Alabamas, the Georgias, you know, dominated by the SEC, rightfully so. I knew we ain't this year. <laughs> Clemson, y'all ain't gonna worry about them. <laughs> you don't have to worry about them, yeah, yeah, so. The Clemson Tigers yeah. this year. <laughs> I think that dynasty is, is <laughs> over, yeah. I'm trying to get that, that one out of there. I'm like, dang, that quit? <laughs> like, yeah. These fans are ungrateful. <laughs> Got these championships. He has a yeah. bad season. It's over for him. It's whatever you done lately. Yeah. What, it's, whatever you done lately. So they they forget everything he's done those past couple of years. But it's about what, what have you done lately and what are you doing now. So yeah. um, it'll be interesting to see what Dabo does too at the end of the year because I really don't see Clemson coming back. They don't have those yeah. connections. So yeah. my connections at the end of the day as well. So yeah, it's it's bigger than football. And, and like you said, I feel. I look at Colorado as like the Miami teams in the nineties. Yeah. Like it's, it's exciting. They, yeah, right? it's exciting. They're doing it their way. And I think Dion and get it figured out. You know, they came out like you said, this year is a success if they don't win another game this yeah. year. You know, people won't admit it because of it's Coach Prime and because of, you know, everything that's going on. But at the end of the day they won one game last year. Mm. They won one game and they still have a chance to make a bowl game this year. And, you know, he, he used that phrase, we coming, but they coming. Them yeah. recruits coming. Like they, <laughs> <laughs> they coming. It's his first year there. Like, I mean, nobody expected Dion to come in and win a national championship. Let's be yeah. real. But they expected him to come in and have success. So, yeah. at the end of the day, what is success for Colorado? What is success for Dion Sanders? Yeah. So, he's cultivating young men out there. He's building the program up. You know, they, the financial situation is great out there. So everything is, is on the upward trend right now. Yeah. And, you know, it might take one more year. It might take another year. But at the end of the day, this season is success. I don't care how you look right at up. it. I don't care how you look at it, what angle you look at it. He went in there. He did it his way. He stood behind what he did. And, you know, every game, they end the, every game this year. Yeah. But once again, the Pac-12, the defense is kind of suspect. But – <laughs> their offensive line is is killing them, so they yeah. can't go score for score with everybody. Offense so, and defensive line, yeah, so yeah. So that's that's killing them in the trenches right now. Yeah. So you got to be able to, to sustain in the Pac-12, and they just not built for that right now. But I think Dion to get it situated, and you know, like I said, in my eyes, it's a success. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm proud of what he's doing out there, and and you know how he's growing his young man and. The haters gonna hate regardless. Especially yeah. with, like like he said, he, he got a gold jacket, he ain't paid for it. So yeah. <laughs> his knowledge and his experience what he's instilling in these young men is mm -hmm. further than is more than just football as well. But he like he he, he's, he got that dog, so you know he putting that in those kids. So yeah. and next he making them hungrier. So next year I think they're really gonna shine and yeah, we ain't gonna be having this conversation in four or five years, so if he's still there, like he can't be losing, <laughs> but I think yeah. he really going to, uh, next year, maybe the year after that, I think he's really going to turn around and really do some great things out there. Yeah, and so. it'll be interesting. That's another thing, too. It'll be interesting to see what Dion does when Sador and, and Charlotte were gone. You yeah. Know? Is he going to hang around? He said he won't go to the NFL, but, I mean, at the end of the day, who knows? So yeah. It's interesting to see what happened with Dion here in the next two to three years. Will he hang around and build that program up? Will he go to the league? Will he do something else? So, hopefully, he'll stay. I think it's good for college football, even as, as great as I think college football is, it's even better with, with Coach Prime, you know, in, in the atmosphere and in the conversation with no matter where he is. So uh, hopefully he'll hang around, but that'll be interesting to see what he does uh, in the coming future here. And I think they'll make a bowl game. And, you know, even if they go to whatever bowl it is, yeah. you know, if they win for yeah, them. playing on Christmas Day, you know, one of, the, one of them lower class games, but I guarantee you the ratings will be up. Just because, once again, Coach Prime and the audience that he brings and the type of team that he's built and the athletes that he has. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's like half the – do you think the audience, because they want to see him do well, they just wait for him to lose. Yeah, they wait for him to lose. Yeah, they, they wait for him to lose. They have them tuning in to see – so yeah. they can have something to say about him because he – how how he is and how people p feel about mm -hmm. him and how he first came out flashy and mm -hmm. winning games and things like that. So, yeah. you know, a lot of people all these days just wait for you to fall. Yeah, yeah. We'll see.
And then, you know, back to, you know, we still talking about, about college sports and, and everything. So I, I thought it was an interesting uh, article that I saw this past week. But uh, college basketball kicked off uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think two weeks ago, and we had some good games. But uh, so it came out, I saw an article where they did an a independent investigation of the NCAA Women's Championship game from last year where I would play at LSU. And apparently the officials were not as accurate as the NCAA would like. So their calls and the way they called the game and some of the judgment calls were lower than standard for a national championship game or a game of that caliber. And the NCAA let out this investigation. And, you know, just speaking frankly, all the coaches were, I mean, all the referees were of minority, uh, black and brown, black and brown female. And I appreciate Don Staley, and this is why I love Don Staley so much. So she doesn't care what you think about her. Mm -hmm. She doesn't care what anybody has to say about her. She's going to speak her opinion. And she's a soldier for women's basketball, for women in general, for social justice. And she came out and she basically said, it's amazing that, you know, they did this independent anonymous investigation, but everybody knows who the referees were. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows who called that game. And her comment was, let's not run over these ladies after we threw them under the bus. Yeah. And I just appreciate her so much for that. And I feel like if LSU was the villain mm -hmm. and Caitlin, Caitlin Clark was the superhero, no, they wouldn't have gotten investigated. <laughs> it wouldn't got investigated if Iowa had won that game and LSU had lost. Well, this is the first time I'm hearing about a uh, college game getting investigated, investigated. on a bad call. Yeah, you know, bad calls yeah. every game. Exactly. So exactly. it's like, who can say that if it's a bad call or not? Especially, I always tell you, in football, you can call hold on every play. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's all judgment. It's all judgment call. And I feel like for them to put those referees, those female referees in that situation and let them call that game, they earn the right to call that game. Mm -hmm. Because when they pick those referees, they pick those off of accuracy, off of consistency, off of how well they've done that year. Mm -hmm. So obviously those referees had done good enough to be in that position to call that game. And they were picked by the NCAA. They were picked them by the NCAA and now you get scrutinized because of that. And I feel like because of the outcome of the game, that's why that investigation was done. And why do we hear about this now when the season is about to kick off? LSU got their rings on. Yeah. I don't care what y'all say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what y'all say. They, they won the game. And once again, it's judgment calls, but why put this out now? Like, yeah. what's the purpose of it? Sound like, sound like something familiar to me. <laughs> it's a hoax. They lied. Yeah, it yeah. <laughs> it's false. Yeah, yeah. What's, what's, what's the purpose of they it? They stole so, the game. Like, yeah. they stole the election. Yeah, I mean, come on. So, yeah, that's what that comes down to, especially with what you said and all. Like, I, I, I didn't know as much about it until you started talking about it, but yeah. I've never heard of them investigating the game with the referees for the bad calls or all these games that have had terrible calls that you can yeah. play, you see. I've never seen them investigating, talking about a certain percentage the games need to be, and so this is the first time. So I think they are poking at something with this, trying to trying yeah. to say something about this. So. Yeah, and I, I think it's a reach. As well. yeah, yeah, I think it's a reach. I think. But at the reach. end of the day, the game's over and they got the ring, so it don't matter. Yeah, it don't matter. You got Iowa and you got New Orleans, Louisiana. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, I, I just thought that was interesting. And, you know, once again, love Don Staley and just keep being that spokesperson for women's basketball and, and women in the culture and minorities in general. Um, I, I, I just love her to death and I appreciate her stepping up for those for those women that called that game. But yeah, NCAA, come on, you, you, you gotta you gotta do better in some of those instances. Like yeah. let, you know, it's, it's over with, you know. You should have done that a long time ago. Why yeah. do that now? So, um, and you know, something else I saw that, that's interesting. So, both of us live now in Georgia, but this whole Keith Lee situation. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I saw this came out. So, Keith Lee is a, is a food critic. Um, and what he, does, what he does is, I thought it was interesting, too. He's a former MMA fighter. So, okay, I didn't know for, that. Yeah, for all these people sending death threats and you know, <laughs> <laughs> run up on yeah, them. yeah, run up on them, run up on them. So <laughs> have that work. same energy if you see him in person. <laughs> yeah, but uh, he he's a food critic, and, and what he does is he visits restaurants, and you know he has a, a huge following, and he'll just give his his honest feedback mm -hmm. on his experience as far as the food, the ambiance, the service. And he came to Atlanta a couple of weeks ago, and I'm not gonna name any places or any businesses that he went to, but 
he gave some some honest reviews and they weren't positive you know to those restaurants that he went to and i thought it was interesting that he sent his family in first because he has such a huge following he sent his family in and they were treated differently than he was treated mm -hmm. when he came in there and he just talked about the customer service and the restaurants in atlanta and cardi b actually chimed in on the situation and agreed with a lot of the stuff that he had to say and you know a lot of people you know he got a lot of backlash for it and how he was talking and whatever but um just kind of get your per perspective because we talk about this and it brought up a huge debate about black businesses in atlanta but i think it's bigger than just black businesses in atlanta just black business in, in general and some of the discussions that we've had as far as black businesses and, and our experiences as far as the food, I know it's both businesses, like all businesses, especially in, in Atlanta. Like I've seen, I've been places where I see, I look, I look ahead and like, let me see what the dress code look like, make sure I can get in and we're kicked out if I got to bring extra clothes in the car or whatever, continue to change, especially with shoes. But I've been places like I'm like dressed down, got a suit on. I see people walking with t-shirts. Yeah. I'm like, oh, the dress code, that ain't it. Like I thought it was a dress code here. Yeah. But I guess it's a dress code for some people. I, I remember even uh, Dominique Wilkins has the issue. I can't remember what restaurant it was. But it's a it was restaurant a, in Bucket. A few months ago where they wouldn't let him in because mm -hmm. of the dress code. And he saw somebody that didn't, was in his skin tone, was able to get into that restaurant. So I think it does, it is an issue in Atlanta, especially with sometimes when they know you're a celebrity and you're going to pay more they'll, or give him a good review or things like that. They'll let you in versus somebody who they don't know because you ain't popular but you don't know who that person is yeah you don't know so yeah. you never know but I, I do and then you can't get mad at him for giving his honest opinion about yeah. certain things like <laughs> that's the thing with some people are now they want somebody to tell them something that sounds good or feels good for them instead of the honest truth you got to be willing to hear the truth and be able to correct your actions to do better yeah if not you're just gonna be keep you're gonna keep getting pacified you'd be mediocre be pacified yeah like i i want people to be honest with me if i have a business i have an establishment i want people to be honest with me yeah and you know like i said i thought it was interesting they said he tried to go to some of these restaurants and they told him it was an hour and a half wait or they told his family it was an hour and a half wait mm -hmm. but then when he walked in they said oh we got a table for you right now yeah so I you know, I, I, I can see both ways. That's that's also saying like if me and you try to go somewhere and be like, nah, we got out have wait in Obama walking yeah. here. <laughs> they they clean the door, they clean out the pathway yeah, yeah, for him. Yeah. So yeah. I understand bo both sides of it and but you, you gotta you gotta be fair and try to try to do the right thing by people as well because it, yeah. it does carry a lot of weight as you can see look at the backlash now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. So but you and then again you gotta try to look at it from a business standpoint as well. Mm -hmm. And you look at so Chick fil A. Chick-fil-A is good. Don't get me wrong. Chick-fil-A is good. It's not great. It's good, yeah. you know, but people go back to Chick-fil-A because of the customer service. Yeah, customer right? service. You know, you go, when you order your food, you're going to get good customer service. They're going to greet you. They're going to tell you have a blessed day. They're going to, they you know, they're going to treat you a certain way. And you don't get that everywhere. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people, I go to, people remember how you treat them better than what you did for them yeah. at the end of the day. And I think that's why, you know, Chick-fil-A's and, and a lot of, even the Starbucks and some of these restaurants is because of the customer service and where you treat when you go to these restaurants. So, um, you know, one of those restaurants he went to, the owner actually called into a radio station I was listening to, and the owner said, well, customer service is not key. He said, people will eat at a restaurant that has bad food, or has great food, but bad customer I service. I don't know about that. That's yeah, and I, I completely, I completely disagree with that. <laughs> Even down to, I don't care if, if somebody's doing your nails, somebody's cutting your hair, that somebody's washing your car, cutting your grass. Customer service is everything. Like even if if a restaurant food ain't that good, it's hard to mess up some some mozzarella sticks. Yeah, it's hard to mess up some <laughs> some nachos and some artichoke dip. You know what I'm saying? Or some queso. You heat that up in the microwave, mm. but because of your ambience. And I know when I come through that door, that waiter's going to be there and, you know, they're going to seat me and I'm not going to wait 20 minutes to get some drinks or whatever the case may be. I'm going to frequent that establishment. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, I feel like customer service is key and yeah. you got to be up on that customer service. Even if you if you go to a restaurant and the food is not good, they might have an off night that night. Yeah. Right. But serve that customer service is there. So I'm going to come back and I'm going to try this establishment again because I had good customer service. I yeah. had a good waiter. I had a good bartender whatever this kid, whatever the case is. So that customer service is key. And, and we talk about this all the time. I can't stand, you know, I go to, to an establishment. I don't care if it's black owned 
or whatever it is, but I go to an establishment and, you know, somebody that doesn't look like me comes up to the window or comes up to the counter and it's, hey, sir, how you doing? Good evening, <laughs> ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. And then we come up and we look like that person that's working behind the counter or working at the window. What's up, bro? How yeah. you doing? <laughs> yeah, what's up, homie? How you doing? Mm-hmm. Like, that's, that's, that's not, you know, that's, you treat me the same way you treat everybody else. And I feel, do go you, ahead. Do, do, do you feel as though they feel as though they don't have to code switch or they have to be a certain way with you? I, I feel that as black businesses, black establishments, black employees, minority, whatever it is, we feel that we're entitled to get business from people that look like us because they look like us. Mm. I'm just, I, I'm be just being honest. What, what that allows you, or what that affords you, if, 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 if I'm a, I'm a black male, I would love to take my business to, to a, a black establishment or a black-owned business. Now, that allows you the opportunity for me to give you a chance to earn my business. Yeah. Now, I come to you one time, now what you have to do is you have to earn my business for me coming back. Mm. So in order to do that, you have to treat me a certain way, you have to provide customer service. I don't want you to treat me no different than anybody else. Yeah. Just provide good customer service, but at that same light, I feel like some of the people that look like us feel like, okay, well, this is my brother right here. So, so take it regardless. I, I'm, I'm going to take <laughs> advantage of him because he's going to come back because he looks like me. Mm. I look like him. That's not the case. And I think that's what we have to understand as a culture is that I don't owe you anything. You don't owe me anything. So if, if your price for that, for that meal is $25, I'm going to mm. pay you $25. Yeah. I'm not going to say, hey, let me get the hookup, right? Because yeah. I want to pay full price for that because I want, I want you to get what you earn and what you're worth. Yeah. At the same time, as a customer, treat me the same way, right? Don't sell me short. Don't treat me differently because you have to earn that, that respect for me to come back and frequent this establishment and frequent this business. And I think that's, that's a big part of the discussion that's lost is you know, I'm, you're not entitled to anything. I don't owe you anything. I don't owe you anything. You don't owe me anything. So run your business the way you want to be run. Charge what you charge. Serve what you charge. Do what you do. Like Jay-Z said it in one of his songs. You know what I'm saying? Like charge what you charge and earn your worth and move on. Yeah. If you're not going to pay that, then that's go to another establishment. Yeah. But I'm going to give you that customer service. I'm going to give you what you paid for. And in turn, treat me the way I should be treated. Treat me the way you treat everybody else. So you're not entitled to anything. Yeah. So we, we got to do that. Yeah, it's funny that you say that because I think if you have a job, and no matter what your job is, if you excel at that job, you're, gonna, you're not going to take it for granted. Somebody might see you doing a job and give you a better opportunity. Yeah. I remember even when I was in staffing, like I was in Charleston, I would go like a fast food restaurant. I had a position at Honeywell somewhere, and I'd meet somebody that – at. You know, be honest, most of the time they'd be at Chick Fil A. I'm like, that's fresh. That's great customer service. Mm-hmm. It's like they, they probably do this job. I give my car, but okay, if you looking for a job at Honeywell, I think you'd be a great fit. Versus I go somewhere else and do it, and I'm getting the bad attitude. Like I ain't yeah. all right. This person, they're gonna be here <laughs> the rest of their life. Yeah, but, yeah. So <laughs> it, it, it matters. So you you have to present yourself a certain way, especially you have to present yourself to where you want to go, not where you at. Yeah, exactly, so. exactly. So present yourself and dress for the job that you want and where you want to be. And especially in these times, I think it's different because a lot of people got into industries that they didn't want to be in because of COVID. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people are cleaning floors. A lot of people are doing different things that they're overqualified for. Mm-hmm. And I respect that. Mm-hmm. I respect that because you got to feed your family. You got to provide. You got to do what you need to do. But there's a lot of people. There's a, there's a shortage in, in, you know, a lot of industries, bus drivers, yeah. wait staff, you know, a one lot of this hand, stuff. handouts. Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's a shortage in a lot of industries and a lot of people, like I said, are working for things that they're overqualified for. Yeah. And, you know, you can't take that out on the customer at yeah. the end of the day. So you, you still got a job to do, take pride in it, you know, and, and like you said, you never know who's watching and you never know who may come in that establishment and say, you know what, this person provided great, great customer yeah. service. I'm going to give them the opportunity to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. So, you got you got to do that, and for that, I want to talk about tipping. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's part of what's your philosophy. Before we get on to that, I want to talk about even like that goes on the football as well. Mm-hmm. When these coaches come and look at these kids, your personality and how you conduct yourself means a lot. Yeah, so you can be the greatest player in the world. You got to look at Antonio Brown. You got a nasty attitude. No one yep. want to give you the opportunity or take a chance on you. 
But if you may not be that good, and they, that coach, like, I can really work with this person, person attitude, they're going to grind, they're really going to work to get better, and I can see this person doing something mm-hmm. special, they will give you that opportunity. So it goes past just what you what you think you're doing. You have to look in your future and just conduct yourself accordingly. Yep, yep. Wow. And, and I heard this when I was at South Carolina, Coach Fry, he was a track coach there. He said, hard work will beat talent if talent doesn't work hard. Yep. There's a lot of talented people out there. But if you're not putting your work in, eventually you're gonna get passed by those people that work hard. Yeah. At the end of the day, they're hungry. and that's they hungry. That's what people and look I, for. The eye in the sky never lies. I remember yeah. that one. He's like, you think you're getting by, like you never really getting by. <laughs> you yeah. think you are. Even I remember like at work, you might you get somebody else tasked, but I ain't, I ain't doing this. That's they task. But if you get they task, when come when it come time to lay people off, if you know what your job ain't their job. Who yeah. do you keep? Exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. Make yourself more valuable. Exactly. Make yourself more valuable. And potential, potential will take you a whole lot further than where you are right now. A lot yeah. of people look at that potential and your upside. Yeah. And sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing. So, you know, we look at some of these quarterbacks in the NFL. They, they getting drafted off of potential. Yeah. And they just, they was flatlined when they got drafted. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm not going. One of them was on TV last night, but I'm not. Gonna, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, you got you got to look at that too. So, you know, what what is your upside? What is your potential? Um, but yeah, I, th- I think that's a good point too. Is are you coachable? Are you teachable? Are you approachable? What kind of attitude do you have? So, can I mold you into the type of player that I want you to be? Are you going to fit into this system? And how you so, how are you going to represent? How you going to represent the university? Yeah, when you get there. So. All that goes into play, it, you know, that's, that's, that's a big aspect of it and a, and a big part of it. So that's, you know, people evaluating all of that and looking at all of that. So, and, you know, back to the, to the customer service thing, you know, you know, we was talking about the tipping part. You know, I, I want your, your, your input on that. Like, you know, what, what is your, you know, I guess the standard is 20%, 20%. when you're talking about tipping. So, you know, two questions. So one, you know, when you sit down to eat, you know, I, I feel like that twenty percent is warranted and, and, and granted. But when you do takeout, is that twenty percent still valid? Because really, they just putting your stuff in the box and you taking it home. But what is what is your aspect on on the whole tipping philosophy? Is remind me, you on camera now, so when you come in a restaurant, they already know whether you were ten or twenty percent. <laughs> nah, I, I usually do. I, I, I usually do do twenty percent when I sit down in the restaurant, and just because I know like a lot of it, they don't. I remember in college, I, I had a job where they tried to give me, or tried to give me a service job. They only be like, like seven dollars. They make basically, basically make minimum wage. All their money is all tips, so all that's tips, why right. I tip twenty percent. But usually, if it's takeout, I'll do ten percent. I ain't doing a whole twenty for takeout, yeah. and depending on where I'm going as well. If I go to like a, a restaurant, restaurant, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I'll tip because I know you got to prepare and the ambiance and all that stuff and yeah. things like that. Because you could be taking your time waiting to or helping somebody that's gonna actually give you a real a big tip. Yeah. So I think that depends. That that depends. So I think it depends on where you go, and, and it depends on like you go back to customer service as well. <laughs> if you slow or you, yeah. they you know, take you out to come back, you, you know I'm done with my food, and yeah, I can't yeah. find yeah. you. I gotta go find somebody. You took it's, it's it's gonna show. So yeah. yeah. It goes back to what we said. Like whatever you do, do the best of your ability. Yeah. So it's gonna show in your tip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if, if you operate like everything, if everything depending on the tip, <laughs> you like selling everything. You sell everything exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. My my philosophy is, when I walk in, if I'm sitting down to eat, you start at twenty percent. You you start at twenty percent. No, you at twenty percent. Take twenty minutes. You at twenty percent when I come through the door. So I'm evaluating you from the time I get there until the time I leave. And when I come in, you at twenty percent. Mm. And I wouldn't know it's like that, but when I come in, you at twenty percent. I think that's fair. And you know, if if you you do what you're supposed to do, and we got good good service and. My cup is filled up. I'm drinking water, Sprite, whatever it is. And, you know, you have a good attitude when you come to the table and the order is right. Everything from along those lines, like I said, you start at 20% and then you work down from there. Yeah. And then, you know, take out, I think it's a little different. You know, I, I look at it, you know, 10 to 15%, but I need to have silverware. I need to have my napkins. I need to have my, I don't want my drink watered down, you know, when I'm yeah. leaving the restaurant, different things like that. But. I, I just thought it was interesting, like we went, you know, we went to Miami uh, for, for spring break and they automatically put the gratuity in there when you go eat. Mm. So whether you got, you know, some places here, if you got like six or more, they added gratuity yeah. in, but, and, you know, down there, it doesn't matter how many people you got, they put the gratuity in there. So I'm like, 
that you know it had the added gratuity. I'm like, we don't even need that part of the receipt. Like, you, yeah. take, <laughs> you take that part out. You already had it yeah. in there, so you you whatever machine you use, you can pull that out right then. And it, you know, some things like that, you try to get people not really paying attention. You just yeah, like, yeah. You see them to line. You had a few drinks. You just yeah. you just sign it. <laughs> now you had forty percent instead of twenty percent. Yes, I'm paying just as much in the gratuity as next, I paid for next, my next, meal. Next day you look at your bill like, God damn, man, yeah. I thought the meal was this. Give me yeah. thirty dollars on a tip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you know, just I, I I thought that was interesting though with the whole the whole keep lease situation. But and, and I think it goes by even about the tip. Like during COVID, I would tip more just because you know yeah. like people the have a lot of times, yeah. and things and stuff like that. So I think it depends. And even now with the economy, it's like nobody can catch a break. So yeah, there's always something. Yeah, yeah there's always something. So um, you know, I I thought that was interesting though in, in his his aspect on it. And one thing was too, he wouldn't go eat in those restaurants that provided him preferential treatment. So mm-hmm. he was like, nah, you, you told them an hour and a half, but you tell me five minutes. You yeah. know, they waited just like I did. Let them go sit down and eat. What's the purpose of that? So yeah, is it going to make these restaurants change? No. Yeah, exactly. It's not going <laughs> to no. change. Yeah, it's not going to change. It's not going to change. And it's sad. And unless, um, they, unless he went there with them and they got called out, they might change. But yeah. the other ones that have been doing it are going to keep doing the same yeah. thing been, until they get called out for it. Yeah. So unless people make a stand against certain restaurants, things like that. So Yeah, so it, it was... But I think it was cool though, cause it, it exposed a lot. It brought a lot to light, and people was criticizing. Well, who are you? Who are you? But you know, everybody is entitled to their own opinion. So you know, just just cause you give an opinion on something, mean you have to be an expert on it. Yeah. So you know, everybody is entitled to their own opinion. So that was a, I think I think it was interesting. Um, you know, but just to kind of kind of bring it on home, you know, it, like we said, PCP fam, it's, it's been a minute. You know, since we we we've been ghosts, we had the. Yeah. Halloween, um, you know, I was myself for Halloween. I ain't had no hollow, no no costume <laughs> this year. I was just myself. Uh, <laughs> I'm coming back big next year. Cause I was Black Panther, so <laughs> I, my suit was like I was about 40 pounds of a weight, so I had a Professor Clump suit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, but you know, make sure to follow us on social media. Um, you know, uh, Cuz, tell them where they can find you us. Hit that Twitter at Pet Metal Crew. You can find us on YouTube at Pet Metal, Pet Metal Crew, and you can send us comments, emails, anything you want us to talk about. Email at petmetalcrew at gmail.com. All right. And once again, it's been a fun episode. Um, you know, all the high school players, all the youth players, GFL, go out there and win them championships tomorrow. High yeah. school football players, make Good sure you strive perform. For tonight. Strive for high school. Go out, try to get that ship, get out there. And Penn um, State tomorrow. Like, Penn State, we are. We yeah. got the stripe out. Penn State, we yeah. got to get that uh, work done. Michigan got y'all signals, so just make sure y'all know that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it'll be an exciting day tomorrow for, for college football as well. Hopefully the, the game cops to pull it out as well. Um, but once again, PCP fam, it's been good. Another episode, check for us when we get back in the studio again. Pat Metal Crew Podcast, Gerard June, Spurs Up, 2002-2006. Co-host Rodney Kinlaw here. I'll see y'all next time. All right, signing out. Peace.